Moving on to our next example, if f of x is equal to 1 over x, we have to graph y is equal to negative 2f of negative 2x plus 6 minus 4. So again, as we did in the previous videos, I want to go over the format of the question. In this case, the parent function, the 1 over x, and the transformations are separated. However, I could have also asked the same question having the parent, the 1 over x function, and these transformations combined into the parent function. So if that was to happen, then the negative 2, the a value would be outside, and then the negative 2x plus 6, we would sub in for the x value for 1 over x. So here we have 1 over negative 2x plus 6, and then the c value of minus 4 would still be on the outside. Now let's get into the steps for graphing. So let's go over step 1 and 2. So step 1, we have to state the parent function. Step 2, we have to state the transformation values a, k, d, and c. So right here I wrote out step 1. The parent function is given. It's 1 over x. And then step 2, I wrote out the general uh, transformation format here. And then right under it, I wrote out the transformations that we were given in our specific question. Now, we have to make sure that both formats are the same so we can easily see what each letter is. And notice how inside the bracket here, the, there's a negative 2 attached to the x. And the x in the general format has to be by itself. The k has to be factored out. So we have to rewrite what's inside the bracket. We have to factor out the negative 2. So we'd be left with x, and then positive 6 divided by negative 2 is negative 3. Plus, oh, I keep doing this mistake here. This should be minus 4. Sorry about that. So minus 4. So all we did was we uh, factored out the negative 2 in the bracket here, and that became our k value. So took out the negative 2, left with an x, minus 3. The minus 3 comes from 6 divided by negative 2. And now it's easy to see what each number, which letter each number corresponds to. So the a value is negative 2. The k value is negative 2 as well. The d value is uh, positive 3, x minus 3, x minus d. And then the c value is negative 4. Now, sometimes a question may ask you for specific transformations, uh, depending on what values your letters take, so the a, k, d, and c. So let's give those to you. So if the a value is negative 2, then there's a vertical stretch by a factor of positive 2, the absolute value of negative 2. And because the a value is negative, there's a reflection in the x-axis. If the k value is negative 2, there's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 2. And because it's negative, there's a reflection in the y-axis. Uh, the d value of positive 3 means that the function translates 3 units to the right. And then the c value of negative 4 means the function translates 4 units down. And the horizontal and the vertical translations, especially when we're dealing with 1 over x, are very important when we get into graphing. So we'll elaborate more on that in that step. Moving on to step 3, we have to make a table of values for the parent function. In this question, the parent function is 1 over x. And because this function is so unique, I added a couple of other things to the table of values. So first we have the table of values here. It's a little smaller than the table of values uh, that we had when we did the parent function overview video for 1 over x. However, as we did in that video, we have uh, a portion of the table that deals with the negative part and a portion that deals with the positive part. And if you remember from the video when we describe 1 over x, there's these things called asymptotes. So there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, which is the line that the function is approaching but never touches, and there's a horizontal one at y is equal to 0. There, uh, the horizontal line that the function is approaching but uh, never touching. And the reason why I put the asymptotes here 
is because when we graph the transform function, they will be pretty critical in how the shape of the graph looks like. Moving on to step four, we have to make a table of values for the transform function through the mapping process using this mapping formula here. So we're going to take this table of values and put it through the mapping process, but we have to make a formula for the x and y values for the transform function. And the formula that we use is this one here. So dealing with the x formula first, x over k, k is negative 2, plus d, which is 3. So we would have x over negative 2 plus 3. And then the y formula is ay plus c. So it would be negative 2y minus 4. Negative 2y minus 4. So when we take all the points from the parent function and put them through the mapping formula, we get these points circled in red here. So for example, this negative 10 in brackets divided by negative 2 plus 3 gives us 8. This negative 1 here in brackets divided by negative 2 plus 3 gives us 3.5, and so on and so on for the x values. Then we take all the y values, so this negative 0.1 negative 2 times negative 0.1 minus 4 gives us negative 3.8. So all of the numbers in brackets represent the parent coordinates and all of the numbers circled in red represent the new coordinates of the transform function. So I took the new coordinates and I made a nice list here. So the 8 and negative 3.8, 3.5, negative 2, and so on and so on. Now, when dealing with 1 over x, we also have to consider what happens with the asymptotes. And the asymptotes, the vertical and the horizontal one of the parent function, get transformed through the translation, so through the d and the c value. They do not depend at all on the a and k value. So, if we look back to our uh, transformations, Let's look at the d value. d value of 3 means that the function goes 3 units to the right. So that means that our vertical asymptote of x is equal to 0 is going to get shifted by 3 units to the right. So now the asymptote is going to be at x is equal to 3. So the vertical asymptote of the transform function will be at x is equal to 3. And that all depends on this d value. So I'll put in red here, the 3 here is the d value. Now what about the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0? Well, that depends on the c value, how much the function transforms up or down. And it gets translated 4 units down in our example because the c value is negative 4. So the horizontal asymptote of y is equal to 0 is going to get translated by 4 units down. So the new horizontal asymptote will be at y is equal to negative 4. So the horizontal asymptote will be at y is equal to negative 4. And that all depends on our c value. And moving on to step 5, we can now graph our plotted points. Now, again, specifically with 1 over x, before graphing anything, before plotting any points on the graph, I always like to draw the asymptotes first. So if you notice here, I drew dotted lines for the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes. So the vertical one is at x is equal to 3, which represents this dotted line here. And then the horizontal asymptote of y is equal to negative 4 is represented by this dotted line here. And now when we have the vertical and horizontal asymptote drawn out on the graph initially, plotting the points becomes a lot easier because we can see where they are related to the asymptotes. So it looks something like that, which corresponds to the same shape that our parent function takes. However, now the asymptotes have been shifted. So notice how this graph is approaching the x value of 3, but it never hits it, and it's also approaching the y value of negative 4, but it never hits it. Now the final point I want to make in this video is that these asymptotes represented by the dotted red lines 
are not part of the graph. They're sort of invisible. We just put them there to help us figure out what the shape will look like. But if you took this function and put it in a graphing calculator, the only thing you would see is these black lines. However, on a test, I would highly suggest you do draw these asymptotes like we did here. Your teacher is not gonna take off marks on a test if you do so, unless they're like super strict and they wanna be that guy or girl. But uh, most teachers will not. Now in this video, we went through a lot dealing with the function one over X is a little bit unique again because of these asymptotes. So if you're not fully comfortable, if you didn't catch that all, make sure you watch the video again.